Okay, so I'm going to go over the lab calculations for the aspirin titration lab. Right here on your screen, I have the reaction drawn out for what actually occurred in this titration in lab. So over here on the left side of the screen, we have aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid. And we added sodium hydroxide to produce acetyl salicylate, sodium acetyl salicylate. And water. Okay. As you can see, this is a one-to-one -one reaction, so that's actually going to make our map a little bit easier in just a second. But why don't we back up? Let's take a look at what we actually know about the solutions we used in lab. We had two of them. We had a solution in our burette and a solution in our flask. Okay, so we had a sodium hydroxide solution and an aspirin solution. The aspirin solution was the one that was in our flask. This was our analyte. So what that means is that this is the solution we are trying to learn about. We don't have all of the information we want about this um, solution, whereas the NaOH solution, this is our titrant. So that means this is the solution we're using in our burette um, as a tool to help us figure out something about our analyte solution. So let's list what we know. We know that our sodium hydroxide solution had a 0.1 molar concentration. We don't know how many moles of sodium hydroxide we used, but we do know how many liters we used, what volume we used. So this will come from your final burette reading minus your initial and that will give you milliliters used. And of course, milliliters divided by a thousand gives us liters. So we're gonna divide that number, whatever your number is from lab. So everybody should be different for this. Okay. Um, I am going to use made up numbers just to show you what the calculations are. So I'm going to say that I used 0 0.039. We'll say 0 0.03942 liters. So that would be approximately 39.42 milliliters. Okay. And I'm going to use my molarity equation. So that's molarity equals moles over liters to determine how many moles of sodium hydroxide I used. So if I go ahead and do that, everybody had the same solution, so the concentration should be the same for everybody. And then everyone will have a different number of liters down here. And so we're gonna multiply both sides by liters. So that should work out to 0 0.003942 moles of sodium hydroxide. Remember this number should be different for everybody. So 0 0.003942 moles. We'll all have a different number there. Now, if we look back at our last slide, we said this was a one-to-one -one reaction. What that means is that every time we use one mole of sodium hydroxide, we're also going to use one mole of aspirin. So the moles 
of sodium hydroxide should equal moles of aspirin. So we can use that same number right here. Okay. Now for post-lab question number one, it's going to ask us how many moles were in each tablet. So remember, this is the total number of moles that we had. But we had multiple tablets. So first period, you used three. Everybody else should have used two aspirin tablets. So in order to determine how many moles we had in each tablet, we're going to take that number of total moles. We're going to divide it by those two tablets. Oops. So that will give us moles per tablet. For post-lab question number two, we are looking for grams per tablet. So you can do this two ways. You can either start from your moles per tablet or from your total moles. It isn't really going to make a whole lot of difference. I'm going to start from my total number of moles. So using this same number I did for question number one. And to find grams, we are going to multiply by molar mass, which for aspirin is 180.2 grams per mole. And then once we have that number, we are going to divide by two tablets again. So everybody take a second and calculate your number of grams. So I have 0 0.71 grams in two tablets. I'm going to divide that number by two to get 0 0.355 grams in one tablet. For post-lab question number three, I'm going to take my total mass and divide by my weight, my weight of the tablets, and multiply by 100 to get a percent. So I'm going to use this number right here. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm going to use this number. I want grams, so 0 0.71 grams. And when you weighed your tablets, um, they should have been somewhere around 0 0.74 grams. Um, yours may have been slightly higher, slightly lower. That's OK. But we are all going to multiply by 100 to get a percent. This will tell us what percent of our tablet, what percent of that weight actually came from the aspirin, and what percent came from other sources. So this says my tablet was 95.95% aspirin. And we know that it shouldn't be 100%, right? Our tablet had things in there other than just aspirin. It had a coating and some buffers and some things, some binding agents to help hold it together in an actual pill shape. So that's okay. We're going to look at post-lab question number four. And we're going to take the manufacturer stated amount of aspirin. So the manufacturer, this number should be the same for everybody, stated that there are 0.325 grams of aspirin in every one tablet. Now, because we're using one tablet here, we're going to take this number, but we're going to divide it by two. So for me, that would be 0.37 grams. Again, we are going to multiply by 100. And 
and I'm going to get 87.84% aspirin. So this is how much aspirin the manufacturer says the tablet contains. Um, Post-lab question number five asks us to analyze some of the reasons why these two numbers right here don't match. Because ideally, if we were doing quality control testing, what we would be looking for is a match between these two numbers. Obviously, my number that I calculated is higher than the percentage the manufacturer claimed. So what that means, and remember, I used made-up numbers. Uh, what that means is that there is more aspirin in my tablet than what's reported on the label. Obviously, that's bad. We don't want to be selling medication that is a higher concentration of that medication than what it should be. But there are some explanations for this that don't involve manufacturing error. For one, maybe I overdid my titration. I went over my end point. That would make it appear that I had more aspirin in my tablet than I really did. Another possible solution is that I picked up some extra aspirin from maybe my mortar. Maybe I didn't clean it out well after the last class period had used it. So I had all of my aspirin and then maybe some of their aspirin too. Okay. So for post-lab question number five, you need to think about what happened in your lab situation. Why might these two numbers not have matched?